Hello people, it's Prince Patel here for episode 6 of Prince Patel Speaks and I'm going to address the competition from episode 5 immediately um, there was a winner called, well, there was actually two winners I unfortunately, unfortunate for me, lucky for you I pulled out two names when I pulled out the thing, not one, two so I'm going to give it, to, so I'm going to give both of them the award um, one was called Super Sonic D and the other was called RH so I'd like you both to DM me on on YouTube if you'd like to receive your prize which is the Prince Patel top with colour obviously and um, your size requirements will be needed. I want to thank Coach Sam Mullins again for allowing me to use the Churchill Boxing Headquarters, the Prince Patel Training Headquarters. He's one of my coaches, Sam Mullins, and also Charlie Mullins, owner and founder of Pimlico Plumbers. Um, start the events of the weekend, the only worthy thing of the weekend to talk about is the Lewis Ritson fight in the IVF final eliminator. In this contest you had him have, have a fight, have a towel, uh, the surrender from his corner was done twice and the referee Stephen Gray threw the towel back out twice. Now why would he throw the towel out twice? Let's say the role was the other way in the Argentinian corner through the toweling, would he have thrown a towel out? I don't think he would have. Um, you've got to ask yourself these questions. Why is it there was only two international officials? You've got an IVF final eliminator for the world title and you've got two people from the home country of one of the boxers. To me that's, that's not good, that's disgraceful, it's embarrassing. Um, you'd think Matchroom at their final event on Sky Sports would would hire the international officials and make it more of a fair fight. Thankfully, the right thing happened and the right person won. But I would say this: I'm for, what would have happened if if it had gone the distance? If the fight had gone the distance, would who who would have won? Now we all know who would have won looking at it, but you just never know. Sometimes you just never know, and why is the scorecards not being released? Because you've got a referee who's doing the utmost within his power to make the fight go the distance. He's throwing out the surrender, he's thrown out the towel. The surrender was made. One man gave best, one man's team gave best, and um, the, the referee's just ignoring it. He wants them to fight on. And there's an old saying that is, is, is it? in medieval time was, is it first blood or to the death? And God forbid it was to the death. God forbid that would ever happen. But that potentially could have happened. Now, uh, you, 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 a, a coach knows his fighter. Lewis Ritson is trained by his father. There's also another gentleman in their team called Owen Ray who used to train at Bertley Boys. Now, why would he? Why would they continue that? Why would the referee continue that? Unless the referee knows what the scorecards are, and the referee thinks, you know what, this guy's winning, or he feels he would win. Maybe because he's the home fighter, and he thought he would be winning the fight because he's the home fighter. I don't know. What do you guys at home think? How did you guys at home see the fight going? Did you think Ritson was in with a chance of winning? Did you think he was taking a beating? I, I personally believe he was, he was getting beat comfortably. I personally believe it wasn't even competitive. Um, even Ritson's dad said um, after the fight that he he knew after the first round that he wasn't going to win the fight. And to be honest, um, Stephen Gray said after um, he he said the reason why he let it go on is because there were body shots, and he wanted to give Ritson as much chance to to, to get through it. Now, why? Why would you want to give him as much chance to get through it? The surrender has been made. A man has given best. Um, it's like, I feel maybe, it's like he said body shot, he, if it was head shots, he would have stopped it immediately. But because it was body, he knows people can recover from them. You can recover from head shots as well. That's talking from someone who's competed in the game, someone who's, who's competed at a high level in the game myself. I know for a fact you can recover from both. You can recover from a head shot and a body shot. Um, I know I've knocked out 22 of my 27 victories. Um, I know that once I've knocked someone down to the body, the punch resistance of the head dramatically drops. 
So I feel like when I knock guys down to the body, that I've knocked guys straight. So I've given, I've knocked guys down to the body, and then straight away knocked them out to the head, because their resistance goes. The resistance goes, and it's dangerous. It's dangerous, especially when you got a referee who's trying his utmost hardest to make a fight go the distance. But why is he trying his hardest to make the fight go the distance? Is why is the small cards not being revealed? Well, is there some hidden stuff that we don't know as, as spectators? We don't know. Is there is there hidden hidden business when you when you got like when you're on big shows, big money maybe involved? Who knows, man? Who knows what was going on there? This is all speculation. Anything I'm saying isn't a views of my own, but I'm just saying it's a bit. I'd like you guys at home in the comments to let me know what you think and I'm sorry for the episode being very short I've got something big planned for the channel coming up in the next few days and I know for a fact you guys are going to love it it's Prince Patel there and I'm out